Hi everyone. Welcome to my video series on pet portraits. Uh, my name is Lindsay Anderson. I have been a visual art teacher for 11 years and I am very much looking forward to uh, teaching you a little bit about a variety of styles and techniques to create portraits of our furry friends. Welcome to session two of pet portrait drawing. Um, we are going to be creating a realistic value drawing of our pet today. Um, as you remember in the last session, you were preparing your image and doing your three drawings. Um, they should be very light on your paper. Um, uh, it's not gonna have a lot of detail at all yet. Um, that's where the, the value drawing and uh, shading techniques come in to play. So I still have my printed image available. It is gonna be right next to me the entire time I'm working because I'm going to continuously look back at that image to find the highlights, the shadows, um, and all of the different values. So one thing um, I just need to make sure you understand is that value is a gradual change from light to dark. So there are highlights and shadows, mid-tones, um, everything from a bright white to a dark, dark black in almost any dog. Now, if your dog or cat or <laughs> whatever pet you're going to use, um, if your pet is white, it's tricky, but we'll talk about that later. Um, you will still have a lot of different values in that white fur, almost always. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is make ourselves a blending stump. Um, you can buy these already made, but it's really easy to just use a paper towel and make your own. So what I do is I fold it into a square and then I just use the corner to blend once we start shading this animal. Um, you don't really wanna use your fingers because the oils from your hands can make things look really smudgy. It's easy to get really messy around the edges. Um, so definitely use a blending stump when you're blending, if you're blending. Um, you don't always have to blend. We're going we're gonna to start um, by shading and using a blending tool just so I can show you how to, to cover a lot, of, a lot of space. So you don't want a very sharp pencil to start with because we're gonna block in some of the darker values first and then start to add the textural details after that with maybe a sharper pencil. So I'm just gonna come in here and I, as you can see, I have my image over here that I'm gonna always be looking at. It's really nice just to have it right next to what you're, what you're working on. And then I'm just gonna start with some of my darker areas. So I think I'll start here at the eye and what I'm doing is I'm using the side of my pencil so that it's a smooth application of graphite, which is what is in your pencil. And I'm just blocking in some shapes. So I see this dark shape in the eye and I also see some highlights that I will leave alone. See how smooth that is? So, um, always difficult to to explain things while you're working because you're concentrating but I'll do my very best um, the more pressure you put on your pencil the darker the value so in these darker areas I'm going to just push down a little bit harder and then when things get lighter like in this part of the eye it is a little bit lighter then I'm not going to push down as hard with my pencil Okay. And if you're nice and smooth, or if you're at the application is nice and smooth, you actually don't need to blend very much. So, you know, blending stump hasn't come into play yet. It will, and I'll show you in a minute how that works. But right now I'm just kind of using the pressure on my pencil to, to find those darker areas um, down here in the fur. First of all, if you drew this incredibly light 
Good job. Um, I may not have mentioned that like I should have in the first session, but you definitely wanna do a light drawing because if you have these really hard lines, you'll see the hard lines and you don't want them to look like outlines. You just want them to look like, like values. Um, if it starts to look like an outline, you will find that it starts to look more like a cartoon or an, you know, an illustration rather than a realistic value drawing. So right here, we've got this dark patch of fur and I'm just lightly, like I said, I'm lightly kind of using the dull side of my pencil, but I'm noticing that I might want to blend this just a little bit and see what happens. So let me show you what that looks like. So got my blending stump, it's just a paper towel. You do kind of want the point to be pretty, pretty pointy so that you have some control over your blend. So see how that just kind of smooths things out a little bit. And actually you can take that graphite and what's already on your blending stump and you can move it around your paper into some of those lighter areas so that you don't have, um, you don't have to apply more graphite to your paper to get that look. So Got some darker values there. I'm just blending that all in. And then I can go back on top of that with more graphite where I know it needs to be darker. So I think what I'll do is I will work on this a little bit in a time-lapse mode so you can kind of see how it, how it starts to evolve. And then we'll come back when we wanna start adding more of those textural details. Okay, and here we go. Okay, so now that I've blocked in some of these values. We've got some dark values, some light values, some mid-tones. We have that now in part of the face. Let's just pretend I have the whole face done, okay? Once we've done that and we've blended a little bit, now we want to go back in and start adding those textural details. So your pencil can be a little bit sharper at this point, or if you've created a nice sharp edge just by using the, the side of it, then that works too. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I need to create the illusion of fur. The one thing I want you to know is fur on a dog or a cat um, or any pet, it goes in different directions, okay? So as you can see, the lines of the fur right here are kind of going up and then they curve out. Um, this, this fur is going in this direction. I'll just kind of show you with my pencil. This fur is going down um, in a downward direction. Um, so it's, it's moving in all different directions. So you wanna pay attention to that when you're, when you're creating your fur too, because technically fur is just a whole bunch of teeny tiny little lines. So um, I'm just gonna go in and with my sharper pencil, I'm gonna start making those marks on my paper that are basically just lines going in the direction that I see on my printed image. Now this part, you're not really gonna wanna blend because this is almost like your finishing or your final layer. And that's where you get the realistic texture. And I could probably sharpen my pencil just a little bit to really get those, get those lines a little bit thinner. Um, but now you can see the texture starting to form. So the other thing that I definitely want to do is when I'm using my pencil, I'm going to be pushing down pretty hard in those really dark areas because unless you have a set of drawing pencils where you have um, the softer lead that is the darker graphite, then you really just have to use the pressure of your pencil and this can be done with one pencil it really can be done with just one pencil if you have a set of drawing pencils awesome use them then you can use your your higher level i guess you know 6b um, pencils to really get those shadows in but a number two pencil will work just fine so now i need to start 
you know, some finishing touches, really pushing those dark areas dark. Because a lot of the time um, when my students do value drawing for the first time or even second, third time, uh, they're afraid to push those dark values really dark. What it's doing is, first of all, it's creating a more realistic image, but you're adding more contrast. The more contrast you add, the more realistic it looks because you don't want this whole thing to just look like, you know, a mid gray. I thought someone was coming in. So I'm going to push my dark areas where I see them. Remember just where I see them. I'm looking back and forth constantly. I'm going to push those just a little bit darker. And I sort of jump all over. A lot of people like to just work in one section at one time. Um, it is totally up to you. Like if you feel like you wanna complete that eye before you move on to anything else just to, to make it work for you, then that is fine. But I just like to jump around, I don't know why. So just a quick review, make sure you're working in layers. Um, the amount of pressure that you put on your pencil is going to determine the, the shade of the, of the particular value, whether or not it's going to be dark or light. Um, you can sort of jump around if you'd like, pay attention to the direction of the fur. And then one thing I didn't mention, I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit. Um, you can actually go in and pull out highlights. Um, as, as a finishing touch or throughout the, the process. Up to you. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next session.